What's up guys, Brandon Smith, brand new again, custom furniture restoration. And we're getting back to work on some furniture after doing a lot of kitchens. Um, just finished up another kitchen, should be posted in the next day or so. It's pretty freaking awesome. You guys are gonna love it, so stay tuned for that. Um, I'm back on that 1800s glider that I tore apart a couple months ago, took a picture of, um, with all the spindles, bulby looking spindles, and it's really old and it is in rough shape, but not when I get done with it. So I'm gonna tell you guys basically how to uh, sand spindles that are in really tight locations. Because with furniture like this that's so old, if it's in sturdy condition, I don't try to take it apart. I mean, if the, glue, if the glue is good, if the adhesion and everything is still good, it's solid, there's no movement, I'm not gonna take it apart. I mean, primarily on something this old and risk uh, messing something up. Because I mean, it's not like you can just go to the store and buy these pieces. I mean, that's, that's how old it is, 1800s. That was a pretty long time ago. So I'm gonna show you guys how to uh, sand these little tight, tight spindles. Um, they're real bulby, they're some that are really close together. So I'm just gonna give you guys a little tutorial real quick on how to do that if you ever have to touch up sand or repair any spindles of your own. So basically what I have is a sheet of sandpaper, regular sheet of sandpaper. I'm using 80 grit on this because it's got some pretty thick uh, varnish that I need to get off there and then I'll go back and I'll sand it down with 120 then 220 to get it smooth for staining. Uh, but basically what I do is I take a roll of duct tape and I basically put duct tape on the back of my sandpaper. And the reason I do that is to strengthen up the sandpaper. And then what I'll do is I'll take some scissors and I'll cut down the back of it and I'll just cut thin strips. And the thickness of your strips is basically going to depend on how tight of an area you're trying to sand. Like if you got some really narrow crevices you gotta get in, you're probably gonna wanna cut it pretty thin, but if you got some larger spindles that you wanna really maximize how much you're sanding in the surface area, you can cut it wider so long as you can get down in whatever you need to get down into. So basically you're left with something like this, a little thin strip of sandpaper, duct tape on the back basically strengthens it up. So basically what you're gonna do, anybody that's familiar with shoe shining, I'm familiar with shoe shining, I had to do that plenty in the Navy. So I know that I need to have a pretty strong, durable rag or piece of sandpaper with duct tape on the back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to do this real quick. I'm gonna take you over to this awesome chair glider. I've got it pretty much all sanded, except for these little things right here that look like fun don't they not really but it's gonna be awesome when I'm done so what I'm gonna do bring it over here so you guys can see it I'm gonna basically take my sandpaper and my duct tape sandpaper obviously against the spindle and I'm gonna wrap it around and what I'm gonna do just like shine on a shoe when it's gonna go back and forth and this is how you're gonna get in all those crevices Obviously, if I was to make it a little bit thinner, it'd have a little, lot better chance of getting down in those deep crevices. But you're not going to use a Dremel or anything like, like that on something like this, because all you're going to do is jack up that wood. And we like to keep things as original as possible. So we use something like this just to knock that top layer off. Get down in those crevices. All the matters, all depends on what angle you hold the sandpaper at the tattoo. And as you can see, it gets down in those crevices pretty good. I mean, sometimes you gotta hold a different angle just to get down in there. But you get the idea. So those, that little dark spot down in there, that's really all that's left. And what you're gonna do is just fold a piece of sandpaper down in half and just work that tight crevice. But I mean, that's the best way to sand spindles, especially if you've got some crazy looking spindles like this. These things are awesome. Um, you would hate to jack them up, try to get a Dremel on them and have flat areas on a, on a real bulby surface like this. And it just takes away from the chair. So definitely doing something like this is definitely a way to go on sanding spindles. So that's it for today. Stay tuned for this uh, awesome 1800s glider. It doesn't look like much now, but I guarantee when I'm done with it, it's gonna be brand new again. Thanks guys.